on the 2nd of March 2021, and Listed was released into a closed beta. Despite its initial release date, it had been in testing phases for a while before that point. But the game has changed a lot, through many updates including new maps, weapons and massive game-changing additions, going for its aim as being one of the top dogs in the free-to-play shooter market. So, where is Enlisted one year later? Oh, and by the way, all the footage here is recorded from my FPS channel. Go and check it out and see me try the new Enlisted features and maps for the first time. When I say the word enlisted, everyone's eyes are drawn to the publisher, Gaijin Entertainment. Of course, they are the big name here. From War Thunder fame, they're perhaps the experts when it comes to free-to-play World War II epics. And despite its issues of grinding and microtransactions, War Thunder, all in all, is a fantastic game under the hood. It looks great for a 2013 title. It's great for squatting up with friends, whether you head into private lobbies or massive battles with other players, bombing airfields or dogfighting in the skies to prove your worth. Additionally, with the ranking system, System, most of the time you'll be heading into fights with other players of a similar level. So, whilst paying for upgrades and planes does exist within the game, it isn't paramount. That is, of course, you're in a squad with a friend who has incredible planes and you have a goddamn Nimrod. Yeah, it balances to the highest level. My friend wasn't having the best time flying around in his Spitfire Mark 1, whilst me and the rest of the game had full-on jets. Furthermore, though, the game went on to add tank battles and more recently warships with full combined warfare. It is one of the best free-to-play games out there. That that is until the corporate side gets its grubby hands on it. Because whilst the core of War Thunder is fantastic, the seedy money-grabbing hands do get tangled in within the gameplay sometimes, and this is where initial worries for Enlisted came about. However, despite Enlisted being published by the same people as War Thunder, it isn't the same developers, and nowhere near the same game. Yet, little about Darkflow Software, who are the devs, is readily available to discover. Even their very own website is rather bare and barren, for lack of a better term. Yet, Enlisted isn't their first title. They made an MMO shooter called Cursed back in 2019. It was very popular and despite its lack of player base now still has great reviews. So they decided to take their MMO knowledge and put it into the ever-growing field of World War II shooters. After the renaissance of this genre, it seemed like now was the best time for these historical FPS games to return. With Battlefield 1 leading the charge in 2016, letting companies know that historical shooters were back on the cards, followed with Battlefield 5, post script and hell let loose. Actually, it kind of makes me feel a bit sick putting Battlefield 5 in the same breath as Postscriptum and hell let loose, but despite its issues, the mainstream was on that World War II grind. So, along came Enlisted in March of 2021. It was actually a crowdfunded project announced all the way back in 2016, but initially it came in an early access form, giving players the option to pay £30 to get into the game before it's free to play launch in later months. And yes, I was that sucker that spent 60 quid on two copies of the game just for me and my mate to make content, not realising it was going free to play the week after. I'm definitely not still salty. But it launched a great hype and kind of good success. Being free to play, the floor of entry for the game was, well, on the floor. Graphics wise, it was fine. Don't get me wrong, it looks good, but with other AAA studios pushing fidelity to the next level, it's nothing all that special. But there was a reason for this, because you know what's more important than looking amazing? Accessibility. Letting people who owned war machines to potatoes in the game, and run pretty well on any system that it's thrown at. Boosting the player base to beyond anything and eight K CryEngine Epic could ever hope for. We started off with the Normandy campaign. You see, the game had MMO elements. Would you call it a full, massively multiplayer online game? Not really. But this is where Dark Software's experience in Cursed came in. You didn't just spawn as a random guy, but a soldier with a name and squad skills. Skills that could be leveled up with experience, and equipment that could be given to said trooper. Upon spawning into the game, you could pick whichever squad or infantry you wanted to head into battle with, and the game would encourage you to keep them alive as long as possible with these long respawn timers that if you got a specific soldier killed, it would force you to pick another whilst you wait for them to get back into the action. The game also had some tricks up its sleeve, however. Its USP was this squad game mode. Whilst heading into the fray as a lone soldier was possible, going in with your AI squad was the newest innovation Enlisted tried to bring in. And yeah, it's kind of cool being able to order your own squad around, getting them to attack and hold positions, being able to respawn as one of them when you die. However, in practice, it's not exactly smooth sailing. Most of the time they're more a danger to you than they are the actual enemy. Standing in the 
open, giving away your exact position, and mostly proving just to be stat boosters for your opponent's kill count. But hey, through time it had been tweaked, and whilst not anywhere near a solid feature yet, I can't knock a development team for trying something new and unique. A feature that we have seen before in single player titles, ordering troops to specific positions, Spec Ops The Line comes into mind, but never really has it been perfected in a multiplayer game, yet Enlisted sure are trying to make it so. The title also released onto console around the same time with some great success, but in November 2021 came a PC update that brought in ray tracing and DLSS, giving the game an extra oomph to Nvidia users, with some of the best and biggest updates coming at that time. You see, before this we'd had Normandy in the early access, then we got the Battle of Berlin campaign in May of 21, but November was the biggest overhaul yet, the Battle of Tunisia, a map that I absolutely adore. You can go and check out my initial reaction over on my FPS channel, but boy is this map a treat. First of all, it looks gorgeous, the lighting through the palms of the oasis, fighting in and out of houses to push up towards the ruins where the madness really ensues, seeing planes dogfight above the battlefield as light and heavy tanks hold choke points and cause havoc for anyone that steps out a little too far into the open sandy dunes. It also is a haven for snipers, with open spaces that need smoke and courage to sprint across. It is no feat for a fearful soldier, and for me at least, I think is one of the best additions for the game so far. But it's not all been plain sailing for Enlisted. No, the game itself has had a lot of scrutiny and criticism in the past. Xbox era gave it a 5 out of 10, saying its best features are mediocre and its worst were dreadful. And if I'm going to be honest, whilst I disagree with the over-the-top harshness here, I can kind of see where they're coming from. A polished title, Enlisted is not. Whilst the gunplay is good, it does walk a fine line between realism and arcadiness, and it doesn't quite feel like it knows where it stands, leaving for some often unfulfilling gameplay at times. Enlisted will never be the best shooter in the world, but it definitely isn't the worst, and for a free title it has a great base for something even bigger and better in the future. But seriously Gaijin, why the hell is this thing not on Steam? Stop being stubborn, you did it with War Thunder, so please, do it with Enlisted. I would call myself overall a more casual consumer when it comes to free to play titles like Enlisted. Like many, I am skeptical of the business practices in this free to play space, but I think the game's doing a lot right. At least for now. And because of this, I can't wait to see where it heads in the future. I know it has a loyal fan base. Trust me, I know. Criticizing this game is like putting your hand in a wasp's nest, yet I still think there's a lot more exciting things to come. But I guess we're just going to have to come back to the game in the future. Maybe once again, one year later.